If it's true that positive action by government uh, is a mistake in as much as it tends to uh, uh, exacerbate situations that it set out to cure, uh, wouldn't it follow that your proposal for a negative income tax might actually create a larger uh, class of uh, indolent and, uh, 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 and unemployed than existing programs, or certainly than ideal programs? But first of all, you better You'd better uh, explain your negative income yes. tax because it's, it's frequently misunderstood. Yes, it certainly is. The, uh, the proposal for a negative income tax is a proposal to help poor people by giving them money, which is what they need, rather than as now by requiring them to come before a governmental official, detail all their assets and their liabilities, and be told that you may spend X dollars on rent, Y dollars on food, etc., and then be given a handout. The idea of the negative income tax is to treat people who are poor in the same way as we treat people who are rich. Both groups would have to file income tax returns, and both groups would be treated in parallel way. Under current law, if you or I file an income tax return, and we have, let's say, I were a family of four, head of a family of four, to take a simple case. Which, in fact, you do. Well, I am, but as it happens, my children are grown up, and they're not very good as, no, mo no good to me anymore as income tax deductions. Uh, that's one of the troubles with you kids growing up. Your parents lose you as a deduction. And, and you, you don't tithe their earnings? <laughs> no, I'm afraid I don't tithe their earnings, and I'm afraid in the modern day the parents continue to contribute to the children instead of the other way around. But under... Uh, if I were still a family, head of a family of four, I would be entitled to an exemption of $3,000 without paying a tax. That is, if I had an income of $3,000, I would have an exemption of $3,000, I would pay no tax. If I had an income of $4,000, I would have a positive taxable income of $1,000, I would be required to pay a tax on that $1,000. Suppose I have an income of $2,000. Then by the same arithmetic, I have a negative taxable income of $1,000. Minus $1,000 is my taxable income. The idea of the negative income tax is to apply a tax rate to that minus 1000 and give a man a, a subsidy in proportion to it. For example, the highest rate, it seems to me, at all feasible to use would be 50%, and it makes it simple for arithmetic. <coughs> Let's suppose a rate were 50%. Then if I had an income of 2000 with a family of four, I would be entitled to receive half of that thousand back. That is, I would get back $500 and end up with an income of $2,500 available to me. If I had zero income, if I had no income at all, then I would have a negative taxable income of minus $3,000. I would be entitled to receive half of that, or $1,500. And in this way, this program would say nobody in the country, no family of four in the country, shall have a smaller amount than $1,500 available for it for its purposes of consumption. That would be the negative income tax. Now, the point that I think it's urgent to stress to avoid <coughs> misunderstanding <coughs> is that while there's a guaranteed income, a minimum guarantee of $1,500, that income is not equal to the break-even point, the point at which you pay no taxes of 3000 This difference is essential because there are other proposals which have been made under the name of guaranteed income which would say, let's set a level like 3000 <coughs> Then if a family has less than that, we'll make up the difference. Now, the trouble with such gap-filling programs, with a program which says, if you have less than $3,000, we will make up the difference, is that you destroy the incentive of people to earn anything. Why should anybody go to work and earn anything? Now, under a 50% rate, you also weaken their incentive. And if you were starting from scratch, you might be adding to the problem. But you're not starting from scratch. Our present welfare programs, our present direct relief, and aid to dependent children programs, in effect, have a 100% tax rate. Because if a family on relief, if, let's say, a woman, as currently is mostly the case under aid to dependent children, if a woman who is on relief takes a job and earns $100, and she's honest. She is required to have her relief payment reduced by $100. That's one of the ways in which we've produ been producing poor people. Yes, but it would be easy enough to modify that system uh, without uh, invoking your revolutionary substitute. Not at it? all. 
Impossible. How? Well, well, you say because it's politically difficult. No, 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 no. Never mind the political difficulty. That's how would you modify it? Well, uh, presumably by per permitting her to keep one half of that yes, hundred dollars. Yes, then look at what happens. Yeah. Let's suppose you go that route. And now I have two people, both of whom are working at the same job, mm -hmm. both of whom have the same wage, but mm -hmm. one of them, before he had that job or she had that job, was on relief, and the other was not. The person on relief ends up with a higher income than the person who is not. Under the existing system. Under your plan. Yeah. No, under your plan. If you were, in fact... Well, I haven't said, advanced the plan yet. But go no, ahead. no, under, <laughs> under the plan you mentioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Under a plan where you said, well, now four people on relief, if they get a job, we'll let them keep half their earnings. Mm -hmm. The effect of that is to treat people who ought to be treated the same differently. It's thoroughly inequitable, and I think nobody would stand for it very long. The virtue of an income tax arrangement is precisely that it treats everybody the same way. Anybody whose income is $2,000 with a family of four gets treated exactly the same way, and there's none of this unfortunate discrimination among people. Well, I, I see that point, and it certainly is a, a logical extension of the whole idea of rule by law. But um, uh, in fact, don't we know from the evidence of our, of our senses that the poor really are divided into uh, two categories? Uh, there, there, is, there are, there are the, the poor uh, who are, are victimized by circumstances. Let's say a, a Negro who uh, leaves the South, arrives in New York, uh, and finds that he is not in command of any negotiable skill, though he is anxious to work. That's one category. But the, the other category, and it is uh, generally estimated that this would make up for about 50 percent, are the so-called disorganized poor, the people who uh, are, are, are poor because they are completely unmotivated and because there is some sort of a, a, a neurotic block that keeps them from acting uh, in the way that uh, under, uh, if you deal with universals, you would expect them to act. Now, you say, or do you say, that they should be treated uh, alike. What are you going to do with a poor person who, having consumed his $3,000 or, or, or whatever it comes, un uh, it, it comes up to under the negative income tax, uh, uh, spends all of that on uh, the races and then turns to the community and says, uh, this is the 2nd of January, and I have consumed my year's uh, uh, income. <laughs> now, meanwhile, I have four children. Well, in the first place, uh, the negative income tax wouldn't work along those lines. It you wouldn't give them be weekly payments. Way. I would uh, treat the negative payments exactly the same way as you treat the positive income tax. What we do now is that a person who works uh, files, a, files an exemption allowance and then gets his tax deducted at source from his wage. Mm -hmm. In the same way, for a person who works under a negative income tax, he would end up having his wages supplemented I if he works, but his earnings are less <coughs> than the exemption. He would end up getting his negative income tax From with his, his paycheck yeah. the same way, so he'd get it weekly. In yeah. the second place, uh, those who do not work, if there are those who are not work, That's the one are, I'm talking about. are in the same position as those who do not work but have a positive income. They are required to file, you and I are required to file, an advance estimate of income and to pay our taxes quarterly. Mm -hmm. Similarly, on the negative side, if you had people with low incomes, they would file an advance estimate mm -hmm. of their annual... Such as zero. Zero. Say, yeah. In which case, it would be calculated out that they were entitled to receive so many dollars a week mm -hmm. or a month, and they would get it in weekly or monthly payments. Now, suppose you did all that. There undoubtedly would still be some people who would dissipate it on booze or on the races. There are now. Is there any doubt whatsoever that people on relief are able to find ways of getting around? I know I mean, you may not be aware that I don't know how it works in Chicago, but for instance in New York, there are, there are direct payments by some of the welfare agencies to uh, uh, to houses, to, uh, oh, to yes. landlords, that kind I of business, know. and and uh, occasionally it goes so far at the discretion of the caseworker, direct payments to uh, grocers, so that X amount of shredded wheat instead of X amount of pot is delivered. Uh, oh, uh, I understand, but, but you and I understand the free market, yeah. and that shredded wheat once delivered doesn't have to stay in the home to which it's delivered. Let's not underestimate no, the ingenuity no, of the poor people in converting, that's right. in converting what they get from the relief worker to what they want. That's true, but I think... And we, that's we, just wasteful. Yeah. They would be far better off if we just gave them the money and let them spend it. No, but it, it seems to me that some are very intelligent uh, critics of your proposal who are as, as wedded as, as you to the same ideals of, of freedom and so on, to do make the point that um, uh, in a full employment society, uh, when you have people who resist employment because they are under-motivated, precisely what they then need 
is to be treated not as members of an equal category, uh, but as individuals with individual problems, and that uh, uh, precisely what therefore is needed is the administration of welfare. Well, but let's take that argument. I, I think there's a great deal to the fact that many people do need this, but it's obvious that under present arrangements they don't get it. The welfare worker today is not really someone who is able. This is why welfare work is such an unattractive occupation, because a welfare worker is not in a position to help the relief recipient. Well, he is are, a policeman and a spy. He has to keep tabs on him to be sure he gets the money well, right. Well, so now, as a school teacher, uh, you can say that about a school teacher. But yes, I would like to reduce the extent to which the school teachers are public servants and make them uh, bring more competition into schools, too. Yeah, but, but, but uh, do, 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 do you consider it a spy in that rather perfidious sense? Uh, if you actually look in to find out whether or not, let's say, the four babies have been fed in the last 36 hours or whether they've been inoculated. Yeah. Uh, that isn't uh, what I was referring to. Well, I, 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 would assume not. I would assume not. But th th therefore, the, the kind of spying that goes yeah. with case working uh, is, 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 uh, is an act really of it, 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 uh, patronage, isn't it? That is to say, no, no, the kind it's of in spying, local parentis. No, no, the kind of spying I was thinking of was, like, uh, was standing outside a woman's apartment at 3 o'clock in the morning to make sure she is not entertaining a man who might be oh, well, who on, might be charged with support sure. for the children. Yeah, these or, are abuses. These are abuses. Or but making sure abuses. that the... But they're mostly abuses. You have a system <coughs> which, which, which stimulates abuse. Aren't you evading the point Let me go back that, to your... Uh, 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 abuse, absent the abuses, yes. you've still got a situation in which somebody has got to concern himself over the administration of the family by somebody who's a member of the disorganized poor. As I say, elementary things like yeah. have they had their vaccination? Let me let me take that. Let me go to that point. At, as I, I would say, first, at the present time, we're not doing it. In the second place, for a great large fraction of the people who are being helped, they have the, every incentive to do it themselves. If we give them the money, we will strengthen their responsibility. Third, under any system, you're going to have hardship cases. You're going to have the special problems. You're going to have the people you talk about. One of the great virtues of the negative income tax, in my opinion, is that by taking off the mass burden of income maintenance, it would make it possible for private charitable organizations to do a useful function of just the kind of thing you're talking about. I don't believe governmental civil servants can perform that function well. well I believe the great yes. virtue of private charity has always been that it was able to be individualized, sure. that it was able to go to the particular person. Mm. The welfare, the governmental welfare programs have destroyed mm. private charity. Yes, but then, then, of course, the question arises uh, as a political matter, just as, for instance, you have written that one of the weaknesses of Keynesian fiscal policy is, is political. You know, yes. it's hard to tax even in times of prosperity. But uh, uh, assuming that one were to launch the Friedman Plan, uh, isn't it likely uh, in a democratic politics that you would end up increasing that uh, lower level of guarantee to such a point as, in effect, to preempt uh, the uh, uh, ad hoc uh, 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 supplements that would normally be given by a private and discriminating charity. As you know, in politics, you can't win an election without a candidate. You can't beat a candidate without another yeah. candidate. And the situation now is the same. We're comparing alternatives. Yeah. The question is, of various alternatives, which is more subject to this danger? And it seems to me experience suggests that our present welfare programs are clearly very much subject to this danger. Look at what's been happening. In a period of unprecedented prosperity and affluence, the number of people on the welfare ro rolls is skyrocketing. Been skyrocketing. Why? Because once they get on, we make it almost impossible for them to get off. In order for somebody who gets on to get off, he or she has to be able to have a really good job because to earn a little bit, get off gradually, now doesn't pay. Mm -hmm. Under a negative income tax, you would have people give people, give the poor people, a possibility of getting off gradually. They can earn an extra $100 or an extra $200 and be better off.